it's Emily. Today we're going to do um, the autumn of the Four Seasons. Um, it is a video that is sponsored by Tumplay. Tumplay is an app um, that you can use to uh, play with an accompaniment. So when you buy a piece, um, you get, in that case, the orchestral part, uh, the flute part, and then the flute and orchestra, and then you can choose to play with uh, one of those three. Or all of those like one after the other of course uh, you get the music you can print it or you can follow directly on the app on your screen and uh, it works very well we've been doing a couple of videos yet okay so if you have any comments um, or questions you can leave them in the live stream and if um, if you have other questions that are not related to the piece, I can also an answer them. So let's start. Um, I'll just do one little thing. Yeah. Okay, so I think their pitch, I'll just listen. I think you're on the, like, that's not the first movement. Yeah, I was Check like... Check the tab on the left. Okay. Tabs at the top. Regular tabs on Chrome. Okay. It's that one in the middle. Up. Right. This one? Yeah. I see. Thank you. I think. try it with the orchestra. Um, this piece is programmatic music. There's a poem that goes with the different movements. So this one, um, so Allegro celebrates the peasant with songs and dances, the pleasure of a bountiful harvest and fired up by Bacchus's liquor, many end their revelry in sleep. It's a bit like um, um, Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's do this. Mm. I didn't get to practice it because we just got it. Huh? So it's really the first time I'm looking at this. Okay, I'm gonna put my music like this. It doesn't seem to be a lot of places for me to turn the pages, but I'll stop before the end. Okay, it's just four. Thank you. 
Okay, so those are F. So the, the whole beginning, um, I would try to be careful with the intonation because the first, um, when you have uh, the first phrase, second register, forte, and then second phrase is uh, like an echo, first, first octave, uh, piano. So when you play piano, it tends to go lower, and when you play lower in the register, it also tends to go lower. So two things that might affect the intonation. So maybe I would practice this whole thing with a with an uh, with a tuner just to see if there's um, different um, tendencies, you know, that you want to avoid, like going too low when you do the um, the repeat. So that, and then the rest is there's a lot of repeated notes. So you have to think it's going forward because repeated notes can sound a bit like You know, if you give too many accents and you don't think a long phrase, um, it becomes too uh, vertical and not horizontal enough. So I'll try to do it better this time. You see, I see it as a one thing instead of all these little chopped things. So I don't know if that's clear. That's pretty much what I would do there. Breathing is not too difficult. There's a lot of rests or just after a long note, like a half a uh, quarter note, you can breathe there if you can't go all the way to the next rest. So that's it for that part. Now at B, let's see. because first time I had a um, hesitation and why you know because if you hesitate just not even a second you know it, it makes everything else more difficult I'm gonna play that part again I don't know how I'm gonna tongue this but I'm gonna play it slower way slower once hear it well so I'm not sure I'm with it. Um, I'll just do it again. You can, you can turn up the volume on your computer. Don't you know the buttons on that? Oh keyboard? yeah. Here, okay. I'm gonna listen to it first just once listen and um, yeah I'll turn it down just a tiny bit because now yeah. hmm. again Exactly, exactly like a metronome, which is okay because they're playing, but just, uh, it's easier if you know it. <laughs> okay, I'll do it again from there. up at one point so I have to practice this 
but I'm gonna try it um, at the real tempo this time. So here I make mistakes, so I'm gonna write little things to help me. Uh, okay. Um, here, my metronome. I'm gonna practice it. Uh, uh, subdividing every eight note. Tum ta 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 Should be okay. I think I'm gonna do it all tongued. That and uh, you know that high A. It's it's the climax. So of the of the phrase, it's the highest note. So I'm gonna try to um, uh, give it some importance. You know. So I'll do this again from B. Um, like this. Okay. E Orchestra there. It's tough because they, they move the tempo a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try it one last time. a scale of F major except the first one is a you have a jump at first so you go C F and then you just go F G A B C D E F you know so in reality if you just play the first of every triplet it's this but then you play the note above it's almost like a trill on each note So then it's pretty easy. Okay, 
Okay, so you do the F, ma F major scale and then you end on a B uh, natural. Um, and then... Okay, so here's... Uh, it's a G at 42. G and then you start again on F. Uh, F, yeah. Uh, okay, so it's A, G, F. Uh, so 41 you start on A and then 42 on G and then 43 on F. So it's... Okay, so if I played it with a metronome that counts every half note, no, <laughs> sorry, every eighth note, um, it would be like this. Like this. I'll just do it faster. I didn't do the, um, the rests though. Um. You see, sometimes I just spend a little bit of time making things clear in my head before I take my flute, because what's the point of taking your flute if it's not even clear in your head? How are your how is your brain going to tell your fingers what to do if if it's not clear there? And you don't want to learn mistakes, so it's better to take a little bit more time sometimes. try to play it. I'll just listen to it once from there and try to figure it out in my head. were okay to do sight read but this one I'll, I'll work on it a little bit um okay no question yet everyone just likes it everyone loves it okay so this is a real real because sometimes we do just practicing of things i played before that i'm just taking back this one is a real real deal <laughs> but when i learned something i would need more than once like something of that level um okay so so you see here at uh, 49 yeah 49 you have um it's like um you have steps so you have the same motive that you will do uh third lower each time uh yeah or almost you know on C, on A, on F sharp, and then on C again, on A, on F sharp. Okay, so it's like, um, uh, yeah, it's going on a G minor chord. So it's, it's like, um, yeah, it's a chord of F sharp, A, C, B flat, that's going on a G. It's like the dominant of, uh, of the next one, so.
again from 44, I think. Yeah. Mm. Because I'm a, I have to be there. And, Sharps, I'm gonna write it down right now so next time I play it I don't forget it because there's no no point in being proud and saying I'm not gonna write it I can do it without writing it and then um, per perpetuating the mistake uh, yeah why you know it's not more work to just write it now and not have to worry about it it's less work <laughs> okay I'm gonna do that uh, so I think until 67 it was okay, I get it. It's the same thing with those repeated notes. You want to make sure you make them go forward musically. They're not like ta ta ta, it's like ta 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 ta. Okay, so. So it's a D minor uh, arpeggio that you're playing with here. Just it's not necessarily just the way you practice it, but it, it, it is the same notes, okay. Never seen that. Is it a violent term? Uh, Ubriaco. Ubriaco. I'm gonna search. Ubriaco. Okay. Okay. All right, music is here. I have a cheese. Music. Hmm. Nothing. I don't have any answer. Nope. Do you think it's something to do with the bow, a way to uh, maybe, maybe the bowing. type of bowing? Hmm. I'll ask around. Okay, doesn't matter. I'm s sure we can still practice it without knowing that. Okay. Taka, 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 taka. I'll do it by two beats. Two beats, I stop. Two beats, I stop. Slower. The sleeping drunk. That's sleeping drunk. Yeah. Okay. Sleeping drunk. Okay. I think, dormi, that's what it's supposed to be. I think instead of playing it taka 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 ta, I'll go ti ta ta ha ta ha ta ha ta. What do you think? Mm. For now, I'll see how I feel about it. It's not a. It's not decided forever. Um. Okay. But you know, <coughs> sorry, a drunk wouldn't uh, wouldn't be so clear in the way he uh, <coughs> he speaks. So maybe the ta ha ta ha ta is better than ta ka ta ka ta super clear. I don't know. I'm gonna go a bit faster.
again. Okay, then the rest doesn't seem that easy either. Okay, from here. Uh, low notes and all that stuff. Now it slides better to go from C to to uh, the other notes. Okay, because I just went like this, oil it a little bit, you know, behind your ear or. I think it's easier when I slur the first two to catch the low C. Okay, so it's always G at the bottom at 76. Always G at the bottom. And then at the top, it uh, starts on B, A, G. It goes down one step each time. G, G, okay. That's good. I'm going to try that whole part from 67. Did I, did I make it at 67? Yeah, I did. So I'm going to do from 72. Because uh, I don't want to be there tomorrow morning. Like it goes faster and slower you have to i guess uh, if you listen to it a lot or you practice with it a lot you get used to it uh if you're not used to it it's like oh yeah faster slower um yeah and then you start again on a g um yeah so Just do it once here at uh, 77. Yeah, let's just start here. major scale and then an F major arpeggio. Okay, 
So I'll do it again from 77. Um, no question? Uh, questions for the end of the end of the okay. thing. <laughs> looking for my spot okay it's there I see it more time on those scales and uh, there was one note that I couldn't hear it's the D so I'll focus more on the D if you do a scale and you feel oh there's a hole try to figure out where's the hole and then put your attention there um, also just before around uh, 79 to 84 you have a lot of syncopations so syncopations they're a rhythmical thing that um, you start a note on a on a weak part of a beat and you end it on a strong part of a beat so on the upbeat and then you end it on a downbeat and when you do that you need to accentuate it because it's this you know and you really hear it well in in the orchestra and you need to emulate that in the flute part okay i'm gonna do again that little part that I was going a tiny bit too fast and I couldn't hear all the notes uh, from 85 or 6, 86. <laughs> I'm not happy with that. Okay, again. I wouldn't do it too much because um, well they don't really do it and you end it so you don't want to end too um, shy so I guess I wouldn't do that last piano here that's written I would keep it um, the very slow part at C it's a big difference so maybe practicing it with a tuner would be smart And I have to make sure I take a breath before that very long note at the end. You see it, um, well, 
um, you have a trill that's four bar, like three bars, and then you hold the note another bar, so four bars in total. It's a good thing to take a breath there. Um, so yeah, everyone will have a tendency to be low at, at C, so be sure to not be, get low by um, sustaining, like supporting well, and not covering the hold, because if you cover or you lower your head, it's gonna go down even more. So you have to counterbalance that. Send the air just a tiny bit higher and uh, use those muscles. You know, if you if you try to bring your ribs, your lower ribs together, those muscles, you can feel them as well if you do Those ones, you, they're really, they're really involved in that. So I think that's, that's it for this movement because there's an, how many movements? Two movements. Just two? No, three, three movements. You have two left. No, this is okay. There. So yeah, uh, that's enough for this one. Um, okay, I'm gonna just try it once. Mm, orchestra. Okay. So dum bum 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 bum. So there's there's eight notes that are not writ that we don't see in the score. I see. try to take bigger breaths especially in the beginning I'm not sure it was realistic though that very very long phrase there I think I'm gonna take another wing two, three, four. I'm gonna take a breath at um, 13 I'll cut that G a little bit um, yeah yeah I'm gonna add some in certain places because, uh, yeah. And I'm gonna try to play just a tiny bit softer, and this way it might be easier. Okay.
Okay, the last one is quite long. Um, well, 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 I think in this one as well, the um, intonation is going to be something. Uh, you might want to work with the tuner, but it's not going to do it all. So you will have to really listen to what's going on here with the accompaniment. And um, I would even say what I, what I would do, what I will do is uh, record myself and listen and pay attention to vibrato a lot. Vibrato, legato and, um, and intonation and take notes in my part. Because when I'm not playing, I, I, I hear more things. And this way I can hear, oh, I'm a bit low here, be careful. When the chord changes, sometimes you might have to tweak the intonation a bit from one chord to the other. Your note um, might need to be adjusted to fit the, that chord. Um, because sometimes you hold one note and the chord changes under, like on the last E at the very end. Um, and then there's the breathing. Uh, it's like, a, yeah, it's like a very big focus uh, exercise, you know, focusing exercise. Um, I don't think I'm going to play it all again. I might just redo the end to see if I can do the last breathing. I would like to just read the poem that goes with it. Oh, where is it? Here. Okay, so this one. Everyone is made to forget their cares and... No, no, no. That can't be it. Yeah, okay. Everyone is made to forget their cares and to sing and dance by the air which is tempered with pleasure and by the season to, that invites so many, many out of their sweetest slumber to find enjoyment. Ah, so that was this one. I'll just redo the end. I'll do from 32 because if, if I just do the last note, I'm not going to be tired, you know, and then I don't know if I really was able to make it. just a little bit ahead all the time. Oh, I didn't even see the right time. Okay, again. their strings you know they don't need to breathe um yeah well i'll have to see how i can do it because the thing is when i tried to uh, get more and more at one point even like i didn't even get rid of all my air before I, maybe i could just oh you know what i'm gonna try something and then i'm gonna change okay change you take a breath that's the only way I see it if I had a good circular breathing maybe I would do it but my circular breathing is uh, too obvious maybe uh, before you are you gonna go to the next one now before you do that yeah okay. before I do that before you, do, you want to talk about what we do the two lesson studio okay. and everything? so if you are interested in having some uh, private flute lessons with me. Uh, it's possible to do that on Skype. So wherever you are in the world, uh, we can schedule 
some flute lessons. If you want information, just uh, email us at info at the flute channel dot com. So info at the flute channel dot com and we will send you the information. If you're interested in being a patron and help us produce more content or just produce content, you know, and um, encourage uh, the artists that you enjoy. Patreon is an amazing platform for that. And so you can go on our Patreon where we offer a lot of different things. We also have a video about our Patreon if you're interested. Uh, what's the address of our Patreon again? Patreon.com slash the flute channel. Very easy. Patreon.com slash the flute channel. And um, so that's for the Patreon. If you're ever buying a flute right now, soon thinking of buying a flute, uh, you can go to flutesforsale.com. So flutes number four sale.com. It is um, the Flute Center of New York, and they have a huge selection of new and used flutes and piccolos. And if you use our code TFC, uh, you will get some perks and we will get something as well. So it helps us and it helps you. You get a longer warranty. You get um, to try more flutes and you get to try them for longer. And uh, they ship worldwide and the shipping is free. So you can also call them if you prefer to work like that with them. Um, also, if you want some different items, we have a very nice um, poster with fingerings, major, minor scales, arpeggios, and trill fingerings. And we have shirts and all those things. Yeah, so that's, on, that's already in our tab, store.theflutechannel.com. Store.theflutechannel.com. Yeah, people are buying. So thanks for everyone who's helping us and buying things and uh, helping on Patreon and uh, in other ways. In so. Yeah. Cool. Was cool. there any question? Yeah, there was a question here. Um, if you want to repeat it for me, yeah. that would be great. Uh, where is it here? I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, um, Robin wants to know, any advice for a flutist trying to relearn? I'm working in a few books, but I'm getting a little overwhelmed and that they're excited about our book. But yeah. how would you, what's some advice for relearning the flute? Yeah, sometimes I think uh, people... Oh yeah, so someone is asking uh, how if I have some advice for people relearning the flute, um, and the person saying he's overwhelmed with all um, like using a lot of different books and all that stuff. Well, um, one thing that could be helpful is to either find a teacher who will, even if you don't take uh, weekly lessons or. Even, like you take lessons once in a while, but if you tell the teacher what you want is to kind of assess your level and give you a program, kind of program that you would uh, be able to follow, that could be helpful. You can also check, you know, sometimes there's, um, you can find, um, you know, like uh, the RCM here in Canada, the Royal Conservatory of Music, they have some um, guidelines of different levels and scales to learn, uh, technical exercises and repertoire, studies, excerpts, so you can check and it might help you to be like, okay, I guess I'm uh, level four years of flute. Let's see. Oh, I could play those things in there. Uh, so you're not too lost. And also uh, try to have a balanced uh, practice time. Uh, so try to put a little bit of time on sound. Let's say you practice an hour, maybe five, 10 minutes on sound exercises, then a little 10 minutes on scales, uh, so you're at 15 minutes. Then maybe you put, um, I would say, what, 30 minutes, uh, 15 minutes maybe on a study. And then you could do repertoire for the other 30 minutes. So you get to do something balanced, maybe not sp spending all your time on one thing, like just technique. Um, yeah, and try to choose, like, let's say you choose a technical exercise, choose it for a week, get it the best you can for that week, then, then change, go through all other stuff and then come back to it later, you know, so something like that. That's good? Okay, uh, that part, it didn't print very well, but I'll do my best. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, that was uh, not great. Oh, <laughs> that's what the orchestra thing. Oh. Yeah. No, wait. Yeah. <laughs> orchestra. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'll go from here. some little things because I don't see them uh, so sorry Okay, okay, okay. I'll just listen to that one. So here. Okay, okay, okay. I'll try that. I'll try my best. <laughs> um, I'll go from 51, I think. So who's the flutist, uh, the New York Phil again? Robert Langevin? Yeah. Okay. practice with the metronome. Okay, maybe I'll start here. No, 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 I don't see well. What's that? Okay, that's... instantaneous you work on it you sleep on it you come back you, you learn when you're doing other things your brain uh, is making connections and um, so it's uh, not something you know they said Rome wasn't built in one day so all those connections your brain need to play that won't be just built in one day you, you need a little bit of time and to be patient so um, I'll do it again from 51 Let's try this. And usually I wouldn't even try to learn three movements like that at once because I'm, you know, I get tired just doing it for, <laughs> for the, the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. 
I'm gonna look here instead. Uh, okay. <laughs> My throat gets warmer, so now I think I'll be better if I just pull out just a tiny bit. Okay, I'll take it a little bit before. So let's say. So you see that that whole part. Um. I would have to um, look at it again. Plus, I'll have to breathe at some point, so. You see, you're alone, so it's not a good place to um, skip a few notes and breathe. I would rather do it at 65. Um, so I could do it at 60 and then at 65. I think it would work. Uh, I feel like trying it again. I'm just curious to see if I can do it. Um, maybe I'll start from 56. brain <laughs> the little um, uh, rabbit is working pretty hard in there okay from there Okay, I see, I see, I see. Oh, I'm getting a little bit tired now. Um. I didn't double tap, so <sighs> I was after G. Okay, around G, F, G, G. Here, okay. Ah, I see. <laughs> Okay, 
kind of getting it. Um, here again, double tap. I'm not sure. You know different tempos, but as well with the um, uh, different tempos, but uh, uh, with the um, the accompaniment, it's cool. written but we hear that's uh, making me not understand what's going on so I'm gonna put it again and this time just with the I practice I try to really focus on the tough stuff the things that I get easily I practice less try this at home type of advice I would not advise to try to learn that much at once so right now if I'm not careful I'm gonna start learning mistakes usually I would I would stop but I'm just gonna finish it I don't think there's that much left okay Mm. 
Okay. <laughs> so I guess it goes way slower there. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just. Uh, yeah, I didn't do the tonguing there because I was like, I don't want to make a mistake and do it again. But I think it sounds okay. I'll slur those. They're only scales. That's why it's it's not that hard. I'll start from there. I'll just listen to it now. <laughs> Okay, 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 I see, I see. From there. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I have to do that again. That H, that, that yeah, there's something there. Yeah. to work on that slow part ag again because uh, you're alone but then you have to get with the orchestra so that's um you know doing it a couple of times and catching it so yes cool. then maybe also if you listen to that version with the flute you'll get it faster mm -hmm. those types of uh, movement changes mm -hmm. you know uh Lindsay wants to know for solo and ensemble festival i'm doing a solo and a duet I'm having some trouble figuring out what level or difficulty I should choose for my solo. Any advice? Want to repeat the question? Yeah. Um, so, you're saying um, you are doing a solo and a duet mm -hmm. for a competition? For a festival. For a festival. And you have difficulty finding what level of difficulty of piece to choose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well... I don't know if the level of difficulty has to be the criteria. Maybe, but maybe you should, maybe you want to choose something that people uh, will like to hear. Uh, maybe you want to choose something that you really enjoy playing. Uh, maybe, uh, yes, everything can be hard and everything can be easy. Some slow movements don't seem difficult, but they're very demanding on all types of things like intonation, dynamics, vibrato, um, phrasing, all those things, musicality. Um, plus, when you when you um, program, maybe try to think about different aspects. Um, maybe you want to have some uh, different styles or some things that are faster, some things that are slower. Uh, to keep your public interested um so yeah i think but i don't know your level but try to get something if, if, if your point is to get better and better maybe try to get something that's challenging enough but that you can also you know that you're going to be able to play uh well let's say you want to challenge yourself technically um you know they call it the proximal zone of development in in education so it's that zone where um, it's it's a challenge, but it's an attainable challenge. You don't go over that because you want to build success. So you want to put challenges that you can achieve, and then you can increase them slowly. So I hope that that's an answer mm -hmm. that's helpful for you. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we have here? How do you get? How do you? Oh, my tone is really bad. How can I fix it? Okay. Well, uh, just also for the thing before i'll just add yeah, one yeah, thing sure. for the repertoire th sometimes it's very funny because we we play pieces that are very difficult and we as musician things those are the most impressive ones and the more interesting uh, by definition but then 
uh, people after the concert come and see us and what they prefer is not necessarily what um, we thought uh, were the most impressive things so uh, just a little th thought on that uh -huh. sometimes so my tone is very bad someone says how, how do i fix it? it there can be a lot of different reasons why your tone is bad uh, maybe you're covering the hole too much Maybe you're not supporting enough. Maybe you're doing a lot of movements with your mouth. Um, it's difficult to know like that. Um, but we have a couple of pretty good videos. It can also be that your flute is rocking. If your flute is not stable, it's going to affect your sound. Because every if, if your fingers are holding your flute, it's a problem. I'll, I'll show you something. So here. When I have my thumb port, I hold my flute like this and none of my fingers are holding the flute. So they're there to play and the flute is super stable. It's not rocking like this. I can also do it without the thumb port like this. Because this thumb is going this way, you know, like that. Even without the pinky, you know, it's all. And when, when I play, there's no movement. But for me, uh, I feel that my hand is more relaxed with the thumb port, but you know, I played without it for years and it was fine, but I, I like it. So it can be so many things you should check. We have videos about uh, basic embouchure, posture. Um, also, um, we have one about getting rid of the air in your sound, another one about clear tone. Watch those types of videos. Look at yourself in the mirror a lot. Look at yourself in the mirror when you practice because you need retroaction and if you're learning by yourself and even if you have a teacher you're your best teacher um the other day one of like a while ago one of my students said that when i tell him things sometimes he doesn't get it right away and then a few weeks later he practices and he's like oh that's what she meant but then he feels like he discovered it but it's it's true you discover it every person who's learning something is discovering it by themselves it's a self-discovery because if i tell you but you didn't feel it you didn't experience it you didn't learn it yet you know you heard it you maybe understood the concept but you didn't embody it i guess so uh, if you're looking at yourself in the mirror trying to be conscious of how you feel how your body is in in, in space <laughs> you know how your head is and on your shoulders how it feels to be breathing opening the chest, all those things, um, record yourself, film yourself. Now we, it's easy to film ourselves. So all those things and maybe get a teacher yeah, or, um, uh, yeah, check out our Patreon too. We have a couple of cool things. Like, um, there's a thing we have that is you record yourself and you send it to us. And then I look at it and I send you either a video or something written on how to improve. Like I, it's called mm -hmm. Analyze My Playing. You can do that once a month. And you could, uh, if, you, if you go on Patreon, you can go and do it every month. Or you can also subscribe to it. And once you get what you want from it, you can you change can your, you can ask for it again. Or you can change your tier. You don't have to stay always in the same tier. So look at that. It can be interesting. Is your flute silver? Yes, my flute is silver. The question was, is your flute silver? <laughs> so, yes, it is. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, just because there's a delay, we'll just wait for questions. But uh, do, 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 do. somebody asked, how do you sign up for Patreon? You just did that. Um, the app that we used. What's it called again? Okay, so the app that we use is called Tumplay. Um, yeah, Tumplay. So, if you Google Tumplay, you'll find it. And mm -hmm. it's very cool to play with uh, an accompaniment like that when uh, I think how little time I had to practice with accompanists when I was studying that's pretty cool to have that yeah will you video any concerts soon well, we have the flute festival if you haven't seen it yet yeah so someone's asking for we're gonna video some concerts soon uh, we have the flute festival from last summer and I don't think I'm gonna video any concerts soon no maybe in March yeah, maybe in March we might have um, something, something yeah. there. We'll and our, see. And then our music videos. Yeah, and we're going to make music videos that are not going to be concerts per se, just music videos. Yeah, yeah. Sure that's the cool next project, big projects that yeah. we'll, we'll need a lot of resources and time for that. So. And 
coming on Patreon will help us. Yeah, <laughs> so if you go on Patreon, that will help <laughs> us, of course. Uh, do you have any flute quartets that you would recommend for high schoolers? Oh, flute quartets. Flute quartets mm -hmm. for high schoolers. Arcadia is really good. Arcadia? I think it's called Arcada or Arcadia. If, okay. Uh, maybe I'll put it on the community tab. And we can okay, it. so Nikolai will put... Some links on the community tab, well, community tab, or on the website, or on the website, the flute channel dot com. Channel.com. Yeah. I know on flute tunes, there's a couple of cute little things there, little arrangements of uh, operas and stuff like that. Uh, I remember doing rice shirts uh, quartets in high school. Yeah, those are famous. Those they are, were pretty good. And they're free online. They're free online or I M L. I M S L P uh, dot, org, dot org, yeah. yeah if you do I M L I M S L P, you'll it. find it if you Google yeah, it. If you look up Rikerd, Rikerd has a lot of Rikerd quartets. has a lot of quartets, and they're they're. I remember really liking it. Yeah. I remember playing also a Flight of the Bumblebee quartet that was a good arrangement, but I would have to ha ask my high school teacher <laughs> about that arrangement because I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, talk just quickly about the online studio and that's it. Okay. And, uh, well, well, so yeah. So again, if you're interested in flute lessons, uh, you can email us at info at thefluechannel.com. If you're looking for a flute, you can use our code TFC at flutesforsale.com. That's the Flute Center of New York's uh, website for flutes that are used and new. They have a huge selection. And also, um, Go on Patreon and see if you can uh, be part of that beautiful community. And uh, I think that's it for today. Yeah, cool. So thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. And um, if you like the video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and see you next time.